we're continuing to work through problem 138. We didn't make much progress in the last video. I kind of just laid out like, okay, we're going to, in this problem, be doing an income statement, the summary of revenues and expenses, the statement of changes in equity, uh, tells us how common shares and retained earnings and any other equity accounts change during the year, and the balance sheet, uh, the list of assets, liabilities, and shareholders, equity accounts. So in this video, let's just kind of work through the accounts of Sherry Shuttles, and we'll try to prepare an income statement based on what we see here. So uh, the question says, Sherry Shuttles is a bus company offering rides to outdoor adventurers. In the summer, she caters to mountain bikers and in the winter to skiers. Sherry's company has the following account balances all on December 31st, 2024 and for the year then ended unless otherwise noted. And there's a big long list of accounts. Below it notes, the company did not issue or repurchase any common shares during the year. And then it asks us first to prepare an income statement. So in this video, I'll try to get to the end of that income statement. And then we'll, we'll pause there and, and do a new video for the statement changes in equity and the balance sheet. So before we can prepare an income statement, we just need to identify our accounts. Now, if you look back to the previous video, problem 1, 2A, we just went through identifying accounts, and we're going to do the same thing here. So each account, I want to say, is it an asset, liability, shareholders, equity, revenue, expense, or dividend? If it's an asset or liability, is it current or long term? So here we go. Wages payable, that is a liability, and it is current, right? It's less than a year. So current liability. Dividends are dividends. They're just their own thing. Cash is an asset and it is a current asset. Common shares is a shareholder's equity account. Accounts payable is a liability. And again, this is think of your phone bill. It's less than a year that you're going to have to pay that thing. Buildings are an asset and they are a long term asset. The word net there is very relevant. For now, just know that. Uh, this is our building. This is the value of our building is $100,000. We'll get into how we calculate that net and what that net means in future videos. Shuttle revenue, it's revenue. Fuel expense, that is an expense. Depreciation expense is an expense. It's got the word expense in it. Insurance expense, that's expense. Telephone expense, that's an expense. Equipment, again, it's got that word net. We'll explain that later, but just think, okay, the value of our equipment is $30,000. That is a long-term asset. Uh, bank loan, uh, in the absence of other information, we're going to assume bank loans are long-term in nature, and it's definitely a liability, something to be paid back. Retained earnings, shareholders equity, accounts receivable, that's an asset, and it's current. This is uh, our customer hasn't paid the bill, right? We did some work for the customer. They haven't paid us yet. We would expect to collect in less than a year. Office supplies, another current asset. Wages expense are an expense. Utilities expense, also an expense. So we've identified our accounts. And what we've said is when we prepare an income statement, we're going to want to see the revenues and expenses. So I'm going to highlight these now. And uh, just to note that this is what I need for my income statement. So I need the revenues and any expenses. I'm just highlighting all of them. There's a couple more down here. And so as I think about preparing my financial statements, think about preparing my income statement, I don't need any of the other accounts. Those non-highlighted accounts are not relevant here. They're not going to be used here. They can be ignored for the time being. So when you prepare financial statements, and we'll do it a lot in this course, you need to properly format your statements, and that includes properly titling your financial statement. They, uh, I'm not very picky on formatting in most of my course. On the financial statements, I'm super picky. You need the title just to be just so. You need the layout of the statement to be just so. You need to put dollar signs in the right place. I am super duper picky on all the little details surrounding financial statements, and many professors are, so maybe your prof will be too. So uh, when you go to prepare your title, know that all titles in accounting have three lines. The first line is the name of our company. The second line is the name of the statement we're preparing. And the third line is the date. And the date has a little bit of special details that I want to get into. So again, name of the company, Name of the statement, date. Let's get to it. Sherry Shuttles is the name of our company.
The name of the financial statement is an income statement. Now this again can also be called a uh, statement of operations. I've heard it called a profit and loss statement as well. And then the date. And we don't date this just by putting the date December 31st on it. We have to put a time period on it. And the reason is because if I compare Amazon's last statement, income statement for last month to Google's income statement for last year, you know, how much a company earns in a month is going to be very different from how much a company earns in a year. So you just need to know the time period that applies. Otherwise, you don't know what you're looking at. So this is, and here's how we'll phrase it, for the year ended, and then we give the date. And well, how do I know it's for the year ended? Well, the question said, give me an income statement for the year ended. The question is going to have to say what time period you're dealing with somewhere. And in this case, it's a year. So it's going to be a year, a month, or maybe a quarter. And a quarter is three months. Those are the typical dates you would see. So for the year ended, and then the date, December 31st, 2024. But you have to put that time period. Otherwise, you don't know what you're looking at. So anyway, there we have a beautiful, mwah, beautiful title. Uh, now we just want to summarize our revenues and expenses. We start with our, weird going on there with my pen, we start with our revenues. And we had, I think it was like called shuttle revenue. Yeah, there it is. Uh, shuttle revenue, 69300 just right here. So uh, shuttle revenue of 69300 shuttle Revenue, actually, it should be a lowercase r here. Revenue, uh, 69,300. Let me write the 69,300 over on this side of the page. So there we have our shuttle revenue. I'm having weird pen issues. I'm really making an effort to write more neatly, and I feel like it's being let down by the technology and the talent. I don't have a lot of writing talent, but I'm doing my best here, folks. I'm absolutely, this is as neat as I can write. <laughs> I know it's pretty pathetic, but I'm trying. Uh, okay, let's list our expenses. And we're going to list our expenses in the order we see them. Uh, you know, you might list them in order from biggest to smallest or some in alphabetical order. I'm just going to list them in the order I see them. I'm not picky here about order. Fuel expense is the first one I see, 11000 Oh my gosh, I am... I just said I was trying to write neat and I'm making a mess out of this. Fuel expense, I forget the amount, 11000 We've got depreciation expense of 2000 Now, one thing I'm not picky about is I allow my students to write exp instead of expense. Your prof might or might not allow that. Insurance expense. 4,000. Telephone expense, 400. Wages expense, 30,000. Utilities expense, 1200 Okay, so there we have our long list of expenses. Now you'll notice something. With revenues, I wrote the number kind of on the right. And with the expenses, I've written them kind of on the left. If you're kind of lining them up, they're, they're not aligned properly. The reason is... When I have a long list of numbers, I'm going to list on the left, and I'm going to total those numbers onto the right. Now, with revenues, it just so happened I had one revenue stream, so that was my total revenue. So I wrote it on the right-hand side. Now, you'll see here, when I total my expenses, I add up that list, and let's add this up. So 11,000 plus 2,000 plus 4,000, plus 400, plus 30,000, 
plus 1,200. I add that up, 48,600, and I write the number on the right-hand side. What we also said was the purpose of this. Revenues minus expenses. We want to know if the earnings exceeded the costs. Did they? Well, yeah, 69,000 in money earned, 48,000 in cost. We're definitely above here, and I think the number is 20,700, the difference. I've just gone, taken the difference between the two. So 693 minus 48,600. I'm just double checking my work. Yeah, it's 20,700. This is the profit of the company. Was the company profitable? Yes. How much money did they make? $20,000. This is the net income of the company. If I take all of the revenues, I deduct out all of the cost, all the expenses, I get the profit. And this is a very key number. In fact, so key it gets double underlined at the bottom. It's the bottom line of this statement. We're done the income statement. Just a couple of formatting flourishes and it'll be all over. So this company made $20,700. We put dollar signs at the top of each column. So there's a column there. Dollar sign goes at the top of that column. There's a column here. The dollar sign goes there. We also put a dollar sign beside anything double underlined. That's really the rule of thumb. Your prof might have slightly different conventions, but that's not a bad rule of thumb. Dollar sign at the top of every column and dollar sign beside the any number that's double underlined and you won't be going far wrong. We don't want to see a dollar sign beside every number. That is for sure. Okay. So we've got ourselves a very nice looking income statement. Uh, what can we learn from this? We learned the company was profitable. We learned it made $20,700. Is this good or bad? We don't know. Why don't we know? Well, if last year they made $100,000 in profit, we'd say, oh, $20,000, that's a disaster. If last year they made $2,000 in profit, we'd say, oh, $20,000, hey, pretty good. Uh, so it really just depends on the company, and we'd need more years of data to, to have a better understanding of whether this was good or bad. Okay, we've finished the income statement. In the next video, we'll prepare the statement of changes in equity. Stay tuned.